Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial on how to do the basics in Final Cut Pro. Basically just opening a library, uh, creating a new event, new project, and then doing a little bit of quick editing. So if you're looking for something more advanced, this is not it. But if you want something that's uh, pretty simple and just to get you started, this is the way to go. So first things first, you need to know how to open Final Cut Pro on a Mac. So what you do is you go down here to the dock. And I've already got my Final Cut Pro saved here in my dock. If you don't see it there, you can go to the launch pad and then in the launch pad find Final Cut Pro within all of your programs. You can also search for it up here and click on that. So once Final Cut Pro opens it'll look like this. Over here you've got your libraries, you've got your browser, you've got your viewer where all of your footage will be displayed, you've got uh, different properties and different uh, editing areas right here. This area is referred to as your inspector. And so you can open and close some of these things based on different buttons to push. You can move around things like so to give you more room in what's called your timeline right here. Also down here is where you've got your different effects, transitions, pictures, music. Uh, this would be your transitions. This is text. Here we've got different generators that can be used and then text transitions themselves. So I'm going to click on this to open up my inspector once again. I've got my libraries here, but I'm going to start with a new library to show you how that's done. First you go to File, New, Library. So now that I've got this open, um, I'm going to click on Movies to make sure that I save it within my Movies folder where all of my other projects are. You can tell by these purple little Final Cut Pro logos. Those are different libraries that I've got, uh, and it saves everything as one package. So all of your footage, all of your everything is saved under that spot. So I'm going to call this New FCP for Final Cut Pro. I'm going to hit Save. So that gives me a few different options here, um, some smart collections or smart uh, folders that can be used, but we're not going to deal with that today. And then here's your event. All right, so your event, I'm going to rename this thing by simply clicking on that event. I'm going to call this practice and hit enter. Now in my event, now this is a really important thing when you're, when you're just starting out, you have to make sure that you're clicked on the correct area when you start importing media or start creating projects. So if I'm clicked on practice and I import media, great, as long as that's what I'm planning on doing. But if I'm under Entitled and I'm clicked on this and I import media or I start a new project, then that's going to save in the wrong spot. If I want to be under practice, make sure you're under practice. A good way to limit confusion is to, right, is to right click on any other library that you don't want to see at the moment. Hit Close Library. All right, now I'm only working with my library. I'm not going to get confused. I click on Event, then I'm going to go to New Project going to call this practice FCP and then I'm going to leave all of this stuff uh, as it is set based on first video clip because I know the video footage that I'm working with is uh, high quality HD however if I'm not certain of what the quality is or I don't like the quality in its original form I can click on custom and I can change that to HD I can change the uh, the rates of frames per second but for now I'm going to keep it as set as um, first video clip and hit OK. So here is my project. It's under practice. It's titled as such. If I click on it once I can see the info over here about where it's saved, what type of format it's in, uh, I can modify the settings, etc. But right now what I need to do is import footage. There's a few ways to do that. I can go to File, Import, Media. I can also hit Command I as you can see right here as my hotkey or I can click on this button. I'll do that right now. I'm going to click on this import button and that will bring up the window to show me all the different areas that I can import from. So here is my EOS digital uh, memory card that I've got some footage on right now. After you see that little um, turntable the thing, clock looking thing finished, then that means that it's done looking for all the footage. Here's all of my different clips. If I just want all the clips, I hit import all. But I'm not going to do that right now because there's a lot of them on there. If I want just one clip, you just click on that one. Let's say I want a bunch of them. I click on the first clip that I want and then I hit, let's say this is my final clip, I hit shift key and click and that imports all of that footage. Right now I'm just going to click shift on these first two. That gives me those two clips right there. Then I'll hit import selected. See now here they are under your video dialog under practice with your practice FCP project right there. And it also will say, if you have your notifications turned on, it'll say import complete, hit close. You can also hit eject to safely eject your memory card at that point. Now what I'm going to do is bring this footage into the timeline. All right, so the way to do that, there's a couple ways to do it. One, you can click on it, 
and simply drag it down. Another thing I can do is click on it, and wherever my playhead is, this is called your playhead here, this tells you where the time sequence is in your timeline, wherever my playhead is, if I hit W, that's where it puts it. Now this right here, this is called slug. I don't want that. So what I should do, I'm going to hit Command Z to undo all of that. And now what I'll do is I'll put my playhead to the beginning, click on the clip itself, make sure it's all highlighted, and then hit W. I'm going to put this one in as well, and then hit W, and that puts it in there. All right, so now that those are in there, another thing that I could do, by the way, is I could use these buttons down here. Let's say I want to layer the clips, click on this, put one on top of the other. I could also put them between these clips by clicking on this and click it as such. Or I can put them at the end of a clip by clicking on this and then putting it right there, and it puts it at the end of whatever the last clip was in the timeline. Now, now that those are in there, what I'm going to do is zoom in on my timeline so I have more room to work with. It's down here. You click and drag to zoom in. You can also hit Command Plus or Command Minus to zoom in and out on your keyboard. And then, so here's my clip, and what I want to do is make a cut. So there's two basic tools that you need for editing for the, uh, the very basic kinds of things in Final Cut Pro. There's the selector tool right here, and the blade tool right here. The hotkeys for those are B and A. A for select, B for blade. So I'm going to hit B for blade, give me my blade tool. This red line shows me where I'm going to make that cut. So I'm going to go right here and make a cut. Then I'm going to go over here and make another cut. So now I've got this clip in the middle and what I'll do is go back here and hit select or I can push A to get select, B for blade, A for select. I'm going to click on this clip and I'm going to apply an effect. So here's a new effect that I want to put. Uh, I'm going to, let's say, 50s TV. Why not? Drag that onto the clip. And now you'll see that my clip suddenly turns 50s TV. If I want to adjust the amount of 50s TV, I can do it up here in the uh, inspector region. I can also turn down the brightness, make it look a little more film noir-ish if you want. So that's how you apply basic effects. And you can find all kinds of different effects in here, including audio effects and video effects. But let's say that I don't want the audio for this clip. What I can do is decrease it like so, or increase it like so. I can also click on the clip, go up to the inspector where it says audio, and then decrease or increase the amount. Another quick tip that you can do is you can, let's say I want to cut the audio entirely from this clip. I can click on it like that, right click, and detach audio. So I don't want any of that. I'm going to cut that entirely. That green stuff, anything in green below your uh, video footage here is always audio. So here's the different audio clips. And I'm going to cut these because let's say I want to apply music and I don't want to hear the background ambient noise from when I filmed. I'm going to click on those. I can click on each of those by holding the command key while I click. Or I can simply highlight like that and then delete. I'm going to put some music to it. I'll click on my audio file library. There's built-in sound effects. Let's say I want stream. I want to get uh, a forest stream. Sounds like that. So now I can drag that over here and apply that, eff that water effect. And let's see how it sounds. Oh, lovely. All right. And then what I can do is apply some music to it. Let's find something fun here. I'll click on my iTunes library. And let's just get something random. How about, sure, why not ACDC? Who doesn't love a little ACDC? And then play it. Yeah, that makes no sense as to why that would be there, but it's fun, isn't it? So I don't want that anymore. I'm going to cut it. Now let's add a couple of transitions in here. Let's do a transition from here into the color. All right. So we're going to click on transition. I'm going to use any number of transitions here, but we'll just do something random like color panes. And let's see how that looks. You play it through and it color panes over. All right, so another thing I can do is adjust this by clicking on the transition and narrowing or widening it. And that determines the length of time that the transition will now take. All right, and so to start and stop, by the way, I didn't mention this, the space bar start and stops the playhead as you are uh, doing all of this. All right, and so now that we've done that, um, let's just try adding some fast and slow motion to things. Let's say we really want this to go slow motion. I click on that, and I go up here, and I go to where it says I can either do slow and give it a percentage, 
or I can do a custom speed and I'm going to do that. I'll do a custom speed. So this gives me uh, the ability to put in the percentage that I want or change the duration for how long I want it to go. I can also reverse the direction, make it go backwards. I'm not going to do any of that right now though. Instead, I will just click on these. These little deals right here allow you to shorten it, which would make it faster, or make it slow motion. Let's just keep dragging that and see what it looks like. We'll put it at, say, 56, 57%. And then there you go, nice and slow. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just put a title over this. Uh, we will click right here. I'll put my playhead at the start of this slow motion clip. I'll click on the title button, go to all. Uh, you can do some 3D ones if you want. We'll just take basic 3D, drag it on here. So you always put it on top. All right, so if you notice, I, I, if I drag it on top of the clip like this, it will offer me the option of replacing the clip. I don't want to do that. That removes it from the timeline. But with titles, you also always put them on top. That means that your title shows up with the background behind it. All right, so here's my basic 3D title. I'm going to type in stream movie. All right, I can change all of the things here, like change the type of text. We could make it uh, cursive um, and then increase the font size as well. And now let's see how it looks. There you go, basic titles. All right, so now that we've added text and titles, now let's share and export our movie. All right, so that's, let's say, our first project. That's all we want to do for today. You click over here on the Share button. You can also go to File, Share, and then send it to the type of destination that you want. I've got these pre-saved. You can add a destination here and say, okay, I want to have something different like whatever the heck Yoku or Todo is. All right, not gonna do that today. What I'll do is I'll click on the arrow here. The one that I use most frequently is Apple Devices 1080 or 4K. In this case, we'll just go 1080. Click on Apple Devices. Practice FCP is my title. Let's say I wanna change it now and call it Stream Movie. Settings. Keep it as Apple devices. You can also increase the file size and make it a little bit bigger and better uh, with its quality by doing computer or web hosting. You notice down here it changes the file size substantially, substantially, excuse me, based upon what you want to do. All right, so what I'll do then is also increase the quality, always have better quality, um, and then this will automatically send it to my iTunes playlist. So then I hit share, and here is your status monitor. If you click on this little percentage monitor, this tells you how long it's taking to share. Okay, so once that project is finished sharing, it'll say 100% right here on the status monitor. You might also get a notification saying share successful. At that point, it'll show up, at least for me, since I had it automatically add to library. It will add to my library here. You, here you can see it, stream movie under iTunes. Another thing that you can do is you can uh, go to Finder. You can go to Music iTunes, iTunes Media, Home Videos, and there's Stream Movie. So in the event that I want to, say, uh, share this to YouTube, upload it to YouTube, or put it onto a USB flash drive, I would then just drag it onto things like my Google Drive, for instance. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the basic intro to Final Cut Pro.